Hi everyone. Um, today in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to shade with pencils. So I get a lot of questions from students about how to shade more softly or more smoothly. And so I wanted to uh, create this video to talk about um, what that even means and some techniques that you can use, um, as well as different papers, textures to look at um, pencil types. So what is smooth or soft shading? Something that's going to look consistently even. There's going to be gradual transitions between the values, uh, regardless of what kind of paper texture that you're using. So here's some uh, examples of what a consistently even gradual transition should look like. You can see how on the left side we have very, very light pressure with the 6B pencil. And as we continue on, you're using more and more uh, pressure and it's getting consistently darker and darker and darker. Um, in this bottom example, it's the same exact pencil, a 6B pencil, um, same kind of light to heavy pressure. But on top of that, I've blended out um, that graphite with uh, just facial tissue. Um, I wanted to show you a few uh, more finished works that uh, have some smoother shading to it. This is my finished work here titled She Paints, um, and this is the close-up version of that drawing. And I wanted to show the close-up because I think that a lot of students don't often consider the work as a whole. And so oftentimes you're really zooming in and really paying close attention to your work and thinking that it's not smooth enough or it's not um, you know, soft enough in, in your shading. But I want you to kind of step back and look at the work as a whole. And oftentimes when you're showing your work, it's going to be on a much smaller scale when you share it. And so stepping back and like, even if it's a larger piece that you hang in a gallery, you're always gonna step back to look at it. And so um, really taking a moment to step back and look at your work as a whole. And you'll find that in the much smaller scale here, it looks very flawlessly smooth, um, really soft shading, but zooming in, you can actually see in the real work, in the actual work, that there is that grain in the paper texture. You can kind of see the graininess um, of the paper texture. And so basically trying to say, don't worry too much about that because you know we're always going to step back and see your work as a whole and that paper texture is not going to be that, that noticeable. That grain isn't really going to be as noticeable. And sometimes it can actually add a really nice kind of uh, quality to the work. Here's another example um, of something that's maybe even less softly shaded. So you can see more of the scratchy pencil texture. Um, you can see where I, exactly I was shading, where I've kind of stopped, um, where there are other uh, layers of other uh, pencil harnesses on top. And again, zooming in, and you can really still see that, that grain of the paper, but also, um, you know, not having blended anything out. I'm not using any tissue or blending stumps or anything like that. I haven't blended anything out. And that can still overall create a really nice, soft um, shading in a sense. Like you get, you can really get the feeling of this is a soft furry animal. This is, um, if you were to pet them, it would feel very soft. Like that can really still come across without relying on blending tools as well. So it's really just about technique and how to hold the pencil accurately, how to, um, uh, knowing what kind of hardnesses to use, what kind of pressure to use. It's really all about technique and not necessarily um, the paper or how you blend out your work. So here I wanted to discuss how to hold your pencil properly. And so I wanna discuss what underhand um, looks like versus what overhand looks like. And kind of the pros and cons of both. And so when you're working with an underhand technique, 
um, it is definitely much easier to hold as you're holding it from underneath and it feels very comfortable. It's, this is what we're used to um, working with, you know, everyday writing. And, and so it's much easier, but at the same time, you risk um, resting your palm, resting the side of your hand onto your paper. And uh, I've talked about in my classes how we do have a lot of oils uh, on our hands that could really stain the paper. Um, and if you're not careful, you can kind of smudge your work or um, really, uh, you know, stain, smudge your work. So be, be aware of that when you are working underhand. I like to place a sheet of scrap paper underneath so that I'm always protecting my work. Working underhand gets you consistent shading over a smaller area. So this is great if you're working on a smaller piece or a smaller section within your work, you can get really consistent shading, smooth shading. Um, you can get uh, more of a more of an even rhythm going with with that smaller section. Um, and it does mean that you are most likely going to be using the point of the pencil. And so you'll get these very fine lines within your stroke. So that's also something to, to watch out for. Um, you'll get these really fine line, very short strokes, and you're more likely to be working with your wrist in that sense. And I always talk about how, you know, you really should watch out if you're working with your wrist. Um, as an artist, uh, many, many hours of that can lead to a lot of problems like tendonitis or, um, tennis elbow with with your with your arms and your wrists so be careful about um, you know not overworking your wrist uh, working overhand um, however is not as stable you don't have that palm to rest on so it does feel a bit floaty so um, it is quite difficult to get used to working overhand and a lot of students tell me that they don't particularly like you know, shading overhand, um, it's not as intuitive or comfortable. Um, but that just takes practice. The more you practice kind of working overhand, um, the more likely you are to, you know, get comfortable with it and be able to use this as a technique. Overhand, um, holding your pencil overhand gets you consistent shading over a much larger area. So if you're trying to get a smooth patch of like a large, you know, background area, or you're working on a piece of cloth um, and it's a large section, you want to work overhand because it gives you more reach. Uh, you're going to be, you know, using possibly the side of your pencil, most likely the side of your pencil, and you'll be able to utilize your whole arm instead of just your wrist. And so that overall gets you a much further reach and, and helps you to cover much more ground, gives you a much more consistent shading over a larger area. So it's not that one is better than the other in all situations, it's just that you should really pay attention to each individual section of your drawing and think of which method would be uh, better uh, for that section. To be able to shade with the side of your pencil, it's important to learn how to sharpen your pencils correctly so that you're able to expose more of the graphite. And so I'm gonna show you how to sharpen your pencils using an X-Acto knife. So you can see um, all of my pencils here have a lot of that graphite exposed compared to kind of a regular pencil sharpener. So here's a pencil that's been sharpened um, regularly and here's um, a pencil that I've sharpened where you can really see the, the length of the graphite that's exposed. All right, so to sharpen a pencil with an X-Acto knife, you want to make sure that you always have your thumb kind of stabilizing uh, what you're doing. So I'm going to put the blade on top and use my other thumb to kind of guide what I'm doing. I'm always kind of pushing away with this thumb to help guide that blade and it feels very stable if you're doing that. So what you're going to do is angle down slightly with the X-Acto knife. So 
kind of a, uh, a 45 degree angle as you're going into it and then kind of flattening out horizontally as you're pushing out. And you're just going to rotate your pencil as you're carving that that wood away. And the next step is to sand that down. So I'm going to grab just a regular piece of sandpaper here. You can use kind of like a 3M general, general purposes um, sandpaper. And um, I use this because it's cheaper. They do sell specific sandpapers just for pencil sharpening, but I find that they're quite overpriced, so I just get kind of regular sandpaper to do this in. And you're just going to sand down the sides of your graphite so that it all comes to like a really fine point. You want to hold the pencil as though you are shading overhand. That way you get an accurate angle to what you would actually be shading with on paper. And there you have it. You're able to get a really nice sharp point smooth sides. It's going to be great for smoothing out. It's going to be great for shading overhand. There are many different paper types and textures and weight. And so in this section, I wanted to discuss how um, your paper choice may affect, um, may affect what your finished piece looks like. So I don't want you to to depend on a specific type of paper to uh, create very smooth uh, finished works. Um, you should be able to create smooth works no matter what kind of paper you're using if you have the uh, skills for that. But if you're looking for like a really specific type of paper, the best thing to do is to really test out your own paper and find out what you prefer. So, you know, heavier weight does often equate to higher quality, but at the same time, if you have a very heavy weight, rough texture paper, it might not be the best for pencil drawing. Make sure you're always choosing archival quality for longer lasting artworks. It should say somewhere on your paper, um, whether it's archival or not, whether it's acid free, uh, what kind of um, archival quality it is. And the smooth versus rough texture of the paper really depends on the paper surface grain. So you'll be able to feel kind of the, the grain of the paper um, and be able to determine if it's a more smooth or rough kind of paper. And smooth paper doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be easier to work with. I find that I do want a little bit of tooth, like a little bit of grain. Um, otherwise, it feels very slippery as you're working. Um, it just feels um, just not as easy to work with because it's so slippery. So I like just a little bit of, of tooth to my paper. But again, test your own papers to find out what you prefer. What works for me and what I like might not be what you like. So really, um, you know, test out um, your all kinds of different papers that you can get your hands on and, and see what you like. So in this next section, I'm going to um, show you a bunch of different papers that I have on hand currently and kind of, um, you know, testing out the different kind of pencils and different harnesses and um, what, what, I, what I thought about the papers. So um, the first paper that I pulled out was this Canson uh, pastel paper in assorted colors. I chose kind of one of the lighter colors that was in there. And um, I wanted to show you this one as uh, one of the more rougher texture paper where you can really see the tooth, the grain in the paper. Um, so as you can see from um, this light pressure to heavy pressure 6B, um, you can see all these little pockets of um, grain where the pencil was just like not hitting that that inside of that crater basically. And so with a heavy grain, really rough texture paper like this, um, it might not be the best idea to work in pencil. So this is specifically for pastel and something this rough texture, um, it's helpful for like pastels to kind of adhere to that kind of paper. But for, for pencil, um, it does really show off that grain. So here I've even used the tissue to blend. 
and um, you can see that the, the grain still shows through. Here is um, the Arches watercolor fine grain cold pressed. And um, I just threw this in there because this is a really super great high quality paper for watercolor. And it does say that it is a fine grain paper and it's super high quality, really heavyweight, 140 pounds. Um, but again, you might be able to see that um, something so grainy, even though it says it's a fine grain, this is a watercolor paper. And so it's really not meant for working in, in pencil. And you can see that, um, you know, that it's, there's a lot of spaces of white where that pencil is just like not adhering to that paper because of all that, um, that grain, all that tooth. Um, I've been also testing with mechanical pencils. So some, some students like to work in mechanical pencils as well. And you can get mechanical um, pencil leads in different hardnesses. So these are traditional pencils in a variety of hardnesses from 2H to 10B. And you can, you can find um, mechanical pencil leads in different hardnesses like that as well. Um, but this is all in one hardness. I think it was like an HB or something and um, just changing up the pressure. Um, and you can see that with a mechanical pencil, I was able to get a little bit more of the inside of those crevices than I would have with a traditional 6B pencil. So something about that super fine point of a mechanical pencil is um, helpful in filling in uh, a lot of that, that crevices that you might find, that tooth that you might find in a more rough textured paper. So that's something to, to think about as well. And here again, I'm blending with the tissue and it does kind of help to soften out those transitions. But again, you're still always gonna be able to see that really heavy grain in this watercolor paper. Here we're moving on to um, Strathmore Bristol uh, paper. This is in a vellum finish. So Bristol paper comes in different finishes and this one is in vellum. And um, this is uh, a little bit softer now. We can see much less grain. Um, there's, not, there's not a lot of grain that we can see. Um, but still I found this a little bit difficult to, to work with um, in pencil. I didn't feel like it was um, super smooth or anything like that. Um, it was just kind of okay for, for my preference. But you can see with the tissue blending, it can get you some really, really soft um, transitions. Um, and even with the mechanical and the 6B pencil, it looks pretty good. This is the Strathmore Bristol um, in a smooth surface, smooth finish. And this is probably the smoothest paper that I've uh, come across the smoothest surface, like the least amount of grain. And you can see that in, um, in the work here that there's just about not any, any kind of grain that really you can see, not, not much texture that you can see. But I found this very difficult to work with. It felt very slippery because it's so smooth that I, I particularly don't like working in, working with this paper because it was just so smooth. But I imagine that this would be a great paper to use if you're really into photorealistic drawings and you want to draw something super, super photoreal with a, you know, really beautiful like blending. Um, I think this would be a great paper to choose for that. This is the um, Canson 1557 drawing in a smooth finish. I underline smooth because there's a lot of different textures that this comes in. And um, this one in particular is uh, the smooth finish. And um, I actually really liked working on this paper. Um, it's got just enough tooth for it to not be as slippery as the, um, the Bristol smooth, but you can see that it's really got that really smooth uh, texture, smooth finish, uh, smooth transitions, and not much grain that you can see. Um, even in the uh, study here where the test here where I was using the different pencil hardnesses, it just felt so easy to fill in these boxes. Uh, it was just really easy to work with. It just felt like kind of, um, you know, like butter, just drawing on it like it felt like butter. 
So I really enjoyed uh, this paper and I highly recommend it. This is Canson's mixed media paper. So this one has a little bit more tooth you can see compared to um, the smooth drawing paper. Um, I found this still pleasant to work with. So even though it's got a bit of grain, it felt really nice to, to work with the feeling under the feeling of the pencil. Um, it felt nice to work with. Um, and I think it's economical in that you could uh, potentially use lots of different mediums on this one type of paper. So not only could you use it for pencil drawings, but maybe you want to splash on some watercolor on top of your pencil drawing. You know, you, you could do a lot of different mediums, um, kind of blend a lot of different mediums along with a pencil drawing. So I thought this is a this is a great uh, paper for that. This is a Strathmore 400 series drawing in the medium surface. Again, this comes in different surfaces and this is specifically the medium one. Um, I usually recommend this paper to my students. Again, it's got a slight bit of grain, but it feels like butter working on there. It's um, super, uh, super smooth and easy to um, shade with all the different hardnesses of the pencil. And the transitions um, look really great. Um, the grain itself, although there is some grain, the grain just feels very consistent. Like it's not all different sizes or anything like that. They're all very fine grain. So the finished drawing just feels really great texture throughout because the grain is so small and just, you know, all very consistent sizes. Um, so the texture I highly recommend. Um, I think this is great for any kind of uh, finished work in pencil. But again, this is the medium surface. So I do believe they have a smooth surface in this that I don't, um, I don't have and I don't ever work with. So um, that, that's something that you might wanna try out if you're looking for something with a slightly smoother surface than this. And I do wanna note that um, the, color of the paper is a little bit more on the cream side compared to the other papers that were really bright white. So that's, um, that's the only kind of difference that I find um, with with this one is that it is a little bit more um, cream off white than it is bright white. This is the Strathmore 400 series but in premium recycled and this is more of that bright white paper. So compared to the um, 400 series, um, the medium surface one, um, this is much brighter white. Um, this also has a bit of that grain, um, maybe a little bit more grain than that medium surface one. But again, still a really great high quality paper, really nice blending, really nice consistency, um, fine grain throughout. So I wanted to show you how to blend out with with uh, tissue, which is what I prefer using when I do want kind of a very soft uh, blend in my gradients. Um, you, it works better if you're using a softer pencil for this. So right now I'm working with a 6B and you want to start by putting down um, very soft transitions. You know, even with a blending tool, if the base uh, that you're working with, the base graphite that you're working it with, if that's not a smooth, soft transition, no amount of blending with um, a tool is going to help you smooth that out. So, you know, you still have to develop those skills of those really soft transitions. So I'm working with a light pressure on this end here, and then I want to do kind of like a heavier pressure on this end here. And I'm using the overhand technique. It's giving me a bit of a wider range. And I'm working with the side of my pencil. That's going to give me a really nice, soft transition already. Looks quite nice. And then I can use my tissue here. And I'm just going to wrap that around my index finger. And I'm going to use that and kind of push uh, from dark to light to kind of blend that, to kind of smooth that out. So I'm using my finger here, going back and forth between the dark section, and then back and forth between the next section, 
back and forth between the light section and I can even push that further out into the section of the paper I didn't even shade at all and what's on the tissue now is kind of gently adding some value onto the paper there. So that's how I would do some really soft transitions blending out with the tissue. Um, I really only like using tissues to blend, um, maybe q-tips for some very tiny areas. I really don't like blending stumps because they're made out of uh, paper, they're made out of cardboard, and they're just very scratchy and stiff. And you really wanna avoid anything hard coming into contact with your paper. You risk kind of scratching and damaging the paper or creating crevices within your paper. So I like to stick with something soft like tissue or even like an old t-shirt, uh, some kind of cotton, a chamois, uh, which is like a, a piece of cloth that you can buy as well. So that's kind of what I like to use. You know, something soft to go against your paper is always gonna ensure that it's a nice, soft, smooth finish. One of my other tips is that to achieve a smooth finish to your work, you really want to avoid in your sketch um, any hard pressure or any um, kind of scratch making, uh, dent making within your sketch. So a lot of beginning artists, um, a lot of my students, And so that's mostly all of my tips on um, how to shade. So thank you for watching.